Well, BP's Whiting Refinery is marking 130 years of operations this year. It is BP's largest refinery in the world, pumping out products ranging from gasoline to jet fuel. The Whiting Refinery can produce enough gasoline each day to support the average daily travel of more than 7 million cars. Wow, the refinery also produces about 7% of all asphalt in the U.S. BP supports more than 12,000 jobs in the state of Indiana. Well, since the turn of the 20th century, steel has been the economic driver for Northwest Indiana. The region is home to the biggest steel mills, and Indiana has led the nation in steel production for more than four decades. The steel business has meant jobs for the area, once employing 30,000 plus workers. That number now is down to maybe around 15,000. Automation and advancements in technology reshaping the industry. And for some perspective on the state of steel in Northwest Indiana, I'm pleased to be joined by one of the foremost authorities on the industry here in the region, Joe Pete. He's a business reporter for our partners at the Times of Northwest Indiana. Joe, welcome to the program. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Uh, to give people an idea, I think you look at Northwest Indiana and that people think steel from around the state. But put in perspective how important that industry still is today, but has been over many, many decades. Ever since they started to build the steel mills at the dawn of the 20th century, like it's just been a central economic driver. This was the last area of the state to become uh, populated. But what really drove the uh, drove the population boom here initially was the steel mills that U.S. Steel and uh, Inland Steel and Bethlehem and all the other old steel companies came and put in. It's been said at various points that the, everyone in Northwest Indiana knew someone who worked in uh, the steel industry, whether it was a f family member a friend, a classmate. Um, it just had a connection to everybody's life. At one point, you've seen stuff where like 100 different languages were supposed to, supposedly spoken in Indiana Harbor and East Chicago at one point, but it really brought the world to Northwest Indiana because they were they needed so much labor initially in the day, early in the day. But it's a very different industry, as you know today. Technology, innovation has changed things. It's reduced the employment by a lot, but it's still, still important here. Oh, absolutely. Yes, um, there have been, uh, the industry has controlled contracted a lot nationally. Many mills, which had accounted for maybe like 15% of the production during the um, 70s and now account for 70% like of the production today. Nucor has long since surpassed U.S. Steel as the largest steel maker. Automation has really reduced the headcount at the mills, like in a lot of manufacturing. Um, you used to have 30,000 people per mill, and now totally the employment is down to about 15,000. There have been a lot of um, overseas uh, foreign steel dumping in the area that's helped reduce like the market share. Foreign steel now accounts for like 20 to 30 percent of the domestic market, and it's just uh, taken a toll on the amount of employment in the. How would you assess this, the, the state of the industry and where things are going? You know, as you said, so important for so many uh, decades. Uh, a lot of question marks. You've got the tariff issue, innovation, the changing dynamics in the market. How would you assess steel and the future of the industry here in Northwest Indiana? The, there was a slight benefit from the Section 232 bar, uh, tariffs last year. You saw um, increases in prices and profitability. A lot of that has since worn off, but you have uh, U.S. Steel is currently investing $750 million into Gary Works. Uh, you've seen some large capital investments. Um, ArcelorMittal continues to invest in uh, talent development. They are um, they have the Steelworker for the Future program. They're investing in STEM programs in the schools. However, there are many ongoing threats and challenges. Uh, Bank of America analyst is warning about a steel Mageddon in the next couple of years because all these mini mills are investing billions of dollars in what will be close to 18 to 20 million tons of new capacity and they're saying a lot of the older steel mills you know it's going to affect a lot of the older steel mills are going to have to take capacity offline um, their imports continue to be an issue you've seen um, U.S. Steel is now idled blast furnace number eight at Gary Works and then East Chicago tin not far from where we're sitting right now that that was recently idled and half the workers there about 150 were laid off so there are um, a lot of challenges but steel is notoriously a very cyclical industry it's very boomer bust um, the market conditions can change quickly, but uh, we have a lot of older steel mills here, and that is a concern, especially at a time when there's a lot of uh, newer investment going on in steel making capacity around the country. Joe Pete is a business reporter for our partners at the Times of Northwest Indiana. Joe, thanks very much for some great perspective. Oh, thank you very much. All right.